worse now than it was. Oh my gosh. Welcome everybody to Catfish Weekly along with Chad and Josh. I'm Lyle, and boys, we got a dandy show coming up tonight. Yes, we do. Josh, you're... we're gonna be telling fish stories tonight. I, have, I got a video. It's not a story. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have some fun. Chad, what do you say we introduce everybody in chat? All right. Get that out of the way. Let's do it. I see we had Melissa first today. We got 922 yes. Crappie Barbecue, Christopher Davis, member Reagan for Fatties, member Danny Stone Outdoors, Benoit Fishing Outdoors, Pontoon Jody uh, Catfishing, Creole Catfishing, uh, is it Christopher Austin Ray, uh, Crappy Day Fish on Bugman 22. There's Miss. Beautiful wife D for Can't 32 months being a member. On. Shut your friggin' face. <laughs> <laughs> we got Mr. Muskrat Adventures. Uh, let me scroll down here. Mr. Sampy made it in. Member Danny Stone Outdoors. <clears throat> member Uptown Chrissy Brown. New member Whisker Pickle Fishing. That's Aunt Pam. Aunt Pam. That's Aunt Pam. Well, hello, Aunt Pam. Hello, Thank Pam. you. on the tournament trail that I host. Nice. We got fishing effects. Fishing with Big Mike. Buckeye Jim. Got John Wischuschrick. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm, exactly. I, I'm I'm from Kentucky, so I apologize if I mispronounce anybody's name. You said something about that in the Ohio River Bowl. Go ahead, man. Yeah. Oh my God! It's been mighty this week. Last week, man, it has four, been four, four been mile an hour cold. current. I know you guys don't know anything about that kind yeah. of current down there in uh, Missouri and Mississippi, but Ohio flowing like crazy. And I saw pictures of the Missouri today, and it was froze over. So I'm just gonna leave that there. That's yeah, right. There Snow in Alabama and raging rivers in Ohio. That's yeah, right. global warming. We got hooks in the hammocks. Made it in. Sean T outdoors fishing with squirrel. <laughs> Christopher Minahan, That's Matthew Webb, NC Drunk Fisherman, Dale Hayslip, Catfish Junkie. Uh, yeah, there's a Parker Pursuits. You ain't got them all, buddy. We're all David we're McCoy. I know. Corey brings people in and out of the woodworks. He Man, does. I was, I was live on TikTok and they were all, they couldn't wait. I've had people texting me all day about this. <laughs> That's nice. awesome, man. That's a good thing. Warren Stock, I well, appreciate you bringing some new faces into the into the mix here. Christina NC Dunnigan. Drunk, NC Drunk Fisherman says, first time here, let's go. All right. Well, welcome, buddy. We got Trophy Seekers Outdoors. Remember Matt, uh, yeah, blah. Mark from Catfish and Crappie. You guys got me all flustered with all these new people. Poor Chad. <laughs> Listen, I'm trying to help you become famous, Chad. Come on. Work oh, man. I am so famous already, buddy. I mean, I already, had to, I already had to put out on Facebook that I will be bringing my autograph pen to CatCon. Just so I know. I can't wait that. to get these autographs. Can't wait. What, what do you mean, putting out? Whoa. What? <laughs> what chat did I join here? <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> I don't even know where this just went. We got right, Lance McCoo guy. Brad Bex. Wow. Chad is definitely rolling. We got Brian Neff. Yes, it is, Dockery. James Dockery Fishing has made it in. <laughs> Sean Abney. The Fish Chopper. And I made it finally to the bottom. Really? You sure? Everybody. I think so. Okay. Lyle, Ooh. I missed it, but I, I missed the name, but somebody in there wanted to let you know that they're a Cubs fan. Go Cubs, go. Oh, my God. Take the Bears it's, with you. Yeah, it's okay. Somebody has to be a fan of theirs because it ain't me. Yeah. People have been telling me for a long time somebody had to be a Michigan fan, and look where we are today. <laughs> oh, don't get my wife started. <laughs> My wife's a Michigan fan. I know. I know she's a Michigan fan. Yeah, that's where, that's, where she, that's where she and I got engaged was the big house. 
Oh, but, well, your guys' wedding was or marriage Ooh. was destined to last forever. <sighs> All right. And there's another new member, S and J Outdoors. Thank you guys so much. We Thank really you, appreciate it. So explain explain uh, this member thing to us TikTok guys. What does that mean? What does it membership to uh, Catfish Weekly mean? It means you are supporting our channel by paying a monthly small little you know thing that helps keep us going with stuff like StreamYard and equipment and stuff like that. So and it also it's like yeah. subscribing. To it's like, it's kind of like yeah, pay. It's like subscribing yeah. on TikTok, right? Yeah. Or you might get some extra perks here and there. We might do some giveaways as well from time to Mem time. Members get early access to videos and things like that. So yeah. okay. I just and know there's, we also, there's a lot of guys um, on here that came over from TikTok that may not have knew that. So and some of the it, we do a lot of giveaways throughout the year. Now we don't have any lined up right at the moment, but throughout the year we'll do several. Yeah, and yeah. we'll pay for the shipping on those. Yeah, because let's face it, shipping has got to be a uh, Chad knows it's got to be it's, it's kind of out of hand. Yeah, I work in the shipping hmm. industry. It is it's outrageous. He has it. I mean, they gotta pay. They gotta pay my. Pay hey, look, they gotta pay my salary that pays for that new boat and truck that I just got. I'm just saying. I thought your wife bought you the boat. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> look. Yeah. We can make we can make this show go viral tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's usually, do I'm, usually I'm the one real little men, but Corey, if if he grabs that reel and starts cranking the crank on it, you went too far. Nope. Yep. <laughs> He's got an actual reel. I got yeah, a million pieces yeah. from the time to time. here. This guy's got it. <laughs> He's got it going on. Buck the, eye catfishing. This Man, fun means the fun is over. <laughs> Danny Stone. Told me to burn oh, it means I piss on your fun. Get it off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shut it going down. down. Go downhill in a hurry. I can't well, pronounce I this it. name. Somebody want to try that? That's the one I could, John. <laughs> Where's Mark at when you need him? Was that John Weiserick? Weiserick. 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 That sounds good. He'll let John, us know. Richard, it. The link is Go below ahead. in the description. And thank you for being a part of our chat tonight. We're certainly glad to have you. And if you choose to join, like I say, mm. there's a link in the description. And thank you so much. No, Roger. Roger, this looks more like your kind of real one of them there slime cat kind of guys. I saw uh, I saw Paula, Paula Hood, Hood. Just, uh, became yep, a member yep. of your guys's. Yeah, thanks, she Paula. Is, uh, also well, thank a member you, of the Thanks, Paula, for supporting the guys. Absolutely. Northeast Missouri Angler just joined us. Thank you so much. <laughs> See, look at this. Last time it was you guys getting me subscribers on TikTok. And now it's me getting you members. I'm just, it's, it's a give and take here. You know, that's right. I'm boys catfishing. <clears throat> and you, you wouldn't believe it, but I have not picked up a single subscriber on YouTube since <laughs> <laughs> the really? last time we did this. <laughs> well, yeah, you're, you'll get more tonight. So, you're, well, you're somebody late. please put up Corey's link to his uh, YouTube channel so we can have that up there because. We need to get him where he needs to yeah. go. The, the link should be also, it's in the description. In the description. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You guys will be happy to hear that I'm currently working on a deal with GoPro. And if I land the deal, my end of the bargain is YouTube videos, YouTube fishing videos. So not nice. can relate. It might happen. Well, you know, honestly, it'll be nice to have somebody else on YouTube that is almost up to you know my level of fishing. So let's get into the fish and talk a little bit, you know. I mean, you can't, you've got some fish recently that was almost, you know, my caliber type fish. Oh, my God. Um, At least the ones you target anyways. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. And just like me, because you live pretty close to me, you know, we, you you can't find them on the mighty Ohio River. I think it's because our current is just too strong for that's them. That's what it is. Washes them down south. Yeah. It yeah. has nothing to do with the commercial guys, but we, that's a that's a whole different conversation. Oh, my God. And it washes them clear all the way down. To the great state of Louisiana, where we've got some friends, you know, in the in the chat here that fish down there. They can't catch them because I haven't shown them fish yet. <laughs> one, one, day, look, on one day, look, one day, one day, I'll give them some lessons, Corey. Maybe, oh. maybe they'll jump on a boat when you with you when you go down. But you know, you you've shown again, just like the rest of us, that an Ohio River fisherman when they go somewhere, all we do is land monsters. That's it. I mean, that's what it is. What it is. <laughs> Josh, you know, 
to, to comment on that without sounding as cocky as Chad, um, <laughs> having to fish the Ohio River and having to fish where we fish in Ohio, you have to be a really good fisherman to find quality fish. You really do. Because we just, you know, you go to Alabama, you go to Wheeler, you go to Louisiana, I hate to say it, the fish are just there in numbers. More numbers than you could yeah. ever imagine. We don't have that here. So to come to the Ohio River and catch big fish or a lot of big fish, I mean, I just watched Roger wear them out the other day on, on yeah. Muscat Adventures. You know, yeah. it takes a lot of practice, and it takes a really good angler to do that on the Ohio River. So so when, when people make that joke, like the Ohio River guys can go anywhere and catch fish, it's kind of true because there, – There's a lot of truth in that. I mean, we, we have to fish some hard water. We don't have the luxury of easy fishing like they do in Alabama. And, and it's it, like you said, you have to work to learn to understand where to look and when. And I say that and people get mad at me. You live fish in Alabama is like fish in a barrel. I mean, you got to work when you go to these places, too. But I think what you learn on a body of water like what we fish helps when you go to a water where they are more plentiful in numbers when you talk about a a larger fish. And it's evident when you listen to those guys talk. You know, you listen to the guys in Alabama that fish a lot, like Justin Fricky and Steve Burian and those guys, when they talk about their small fish being 50 pounds, it is truly something to catch a 50-pound fish on the Ohio River. Like really I got a fifty pound fish, and I mean I caught two last year, fifty six and a fifty four, and I caught one that was sixty four. And I mean, I just said I caught three fish over fifty pounds, and I was ecstatic. Justin Fricky goes and does that in two hours on Wheeler. We just don't have that kind of fish yeah. here. So so when people when people talk about us going up places like us Ohio River fishermen, we get put through the ringer. To go to the, I mean, when we do get a day like I had in Louisiana in October, or I had on Wheeler in April, when we do go have one of those days, it is just paying us off for the work that we have to put through here on the Ohio River. Yep. But the closer you get to the Mississippi River on the Ohio, the better chances you've got to land. Yeah, I agree with that. Because they they will leave that Mississippi and go up there and find oh, that, that, to that stretch that stretch below the Olmstead Dam. Yeah, that full run stretch. It's a good place to fish. Through there, and the confluence is it can be absolute fire down there. Yep, it's yeah. Certain, yeah. Of course, yeah. myself, I like to fish the confluence of any river <coughs> into another river, or a creek into a river, or a creek into a creek. You know, for some reason, there's always bait fish there, and if there's bait fish, well, you know, yeah. I learned a long time ago from Joe Granada, if you're looking for catfish on any river, find life and you'll find catfish. You know, you can find the best structure in the world, but if there ain't nothing living on it, there's no bait fish down there. Yep. It's worthless. Throw your baits into it. But if you find life, that is what, that was the number one thing he taught me when I went fishing with him. And and I would, uh, I would say that my first kickoff in fishing and how to do it was from Joe Granada. He took me out in West Virginia and just taught me how to read side scan and 100% is his biggest thing the whole night was you see this this looks good but there's no life on it and we'd go up 30 feet and boom there'd be life everywhere and he said i don't care what they are i don't care if they're bass crappie bluegill there's life and we'd throw baits into that life and catch fish you gotta find the you gotta find life in the water to find joe is a great flathead joe is a great flathead fisherman one of the best in my opinion that guy can find them anywhere really good PB Flyhead is 43 pounds in the Ohio, and we tried for years to catch him. That's 43 pound fish in the Ohio River is a monster. I mean, it's I got good. lucky. I That's got a lucky great flathead anywhere. 61 oh, pounder yeah. the last time, but but that I caught a 61 pounder on my very first trip out, and my biggest fish since then was 51. So it's I, 43 pound fish in the Ohio River is, is a phenomenal fish. Yeah, it is. You know, you, I mean, you, like you said, we see we see some bigger fish from time to time. But the consistency of finding, I'll be honest, to me, anything over 20, if you're catching 20s consistently, 20s and 30s and 40s in our in our stretch of river, you're doing a really damn good job. Yeah, you've, you've got them dialed in at that point. It's that the Ohio's close to me. It's one of my favorite places to fish, but it's not what it was 20, 25 years ago. <clears throat> Those fish are they're not there anymore. Right. And that's what people don't understand. You can still go catch a bunch of catfish in the Ohio River. And you're right. You can. I can go catch 30 fish a night. But I'm catching 30 10-pounders. 
where 25 years right. ago you were catching 15, 50 pounders. Mm-hmm. Creel says there's a mass exodus of the Ohio River anglers <laughs> on I-55 heading down here. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week, Creel. On Thursday, there's a caravan of us. We'll be down there on Friday. Man, I hope I don't get lost going out to the ice bowl and end up in Louisiana. <laughs> and just take one right turn I, and you'll be there. I, I know my fishing partner for the ice bowl is watching and chat tonight. So, you know, <laughs> if I don't show up, David, sorry. Yeah. Miss, Missy Kennedy, Mike Irwin, Mike Stokes, um, Catfish Junkies, Brad Becks, Carolina Catfish. Thank you guys all for joining us. We appreciate it so very much. Roger, let's go. Creole's got a spot for you. If not, we got a spot for you. Next Thursday, if you live anywhere from the southern Ohio to the Michigan border, we're all headed to Louisiana, and we'll line the river from Venice to Baton Rouge, and we'll just – somebody will catch a big one. Yeah. Now, question. my question is, have you already called the DNR and got them ready for that weekend? No, they still don't answer the phone. So it's <laughs> – there's, there's going to be a conservation officer tied up in the back of his truck. Just, <laughs> so. I'm going to lock him in the bait shop. I've got listen. something else yep. I would recommend, but I better not say it on here. Whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. Let me back out for a minute. <laughs> I'll just get it. I'll just get it ready again. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, to be, I'm trying to be really good. Yeah, yeah. I might. I, you know, that's probably not a bad idea. Turn your clicker off. We have not talked about politics yet. Uh, well, that can be arranged. <laughs> no, but I'm I'm excited to be back on with you guys. Like I said, that last show we had, uh, I got so many comments, text messages. People on my TikTok loved it. Um, I felt the conversation flowed great, and that's why I think everybody was so excited to get on here tonight. We got a lot to cover. Um, obviously, I I keep seeing the people putting three dots over in the chat. And the big thing that everybody wants to talk about is that fish. We all know that's what everybody in here is for. What fish? There he is. What fish? <laughs> I wish I'd have been wearing a hat in that picture. You had to pick that one? That's the picture you chose? That's this, is, this is the stuff that you sent me, Jack. Why is it so blurry? <laughs> you got a Walmart phone? That's my favorite picture. I'm, on, I'm on my laptop, and that's why when I messaged you and Man, asked what a you big, that's a pig. and said, Corey, do you have any other photos that weren't taken from a crap iPhone that I can actually work with? I went back to your TikTok and watched your video and was taking screenshots trying to get you to sit still long enough for me to do a thumbnail with something. And then you had to go fishing in the freaking dark. I mean, I was fishing in the dark. I asked the, the, the game warden to take a picture. He never showed up. I asked him to bring a camera with him, but got lost somewhere. He took the wrong. He, he was headed to me and ended up in North Carolina, I think. So, but yeah, that fish, that fish was awesome. Uh, I mean, it was truly a dream come true. Uh, that story, that trip was one for, it was Chris and I, I mean, we, Chris saw me go down in October. He ended up having an injury and he couldn't go. Um, he had hurt his hand. Uh, he was down to one hand. Um, so I took another buddy of mine and obviously he watched the lives at work all day long and completely got, I mean, he was so mad. Threw his phone across the shop, he said. So we had made a deal once his hand healed, which it took a while. Um, he had an infection in his hand that ate through some of his tendons. So it took a long time wow. for him to heal. Ooh. Once he healed up, Louisiana, we knew that's where we were going to wind up. Uh, <laughs> so I drove down. I was super excited to drive down. May have been going a little faster than I should have been, but I had cut like 50 minutes off of our drive. That's how excited I was to get there. I had a plan. Like I had planned out what gas station we were going to stop at, how long it was going to take to get gas, how long we'd be on the road again. Didn't quite. I was on the phone with Corey at 1130 New Year's Eve. I was all yeah. happening. Crazy stuff was happening. It was crazy. We didn't quite make it to that gas station that I planned for. We ran out of fuel three miles before that gas station. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> so that's how our trip started out. Chris is asleep in the passenger seat. I run his truck completely out of diesel. So I called a tow truck, paid $100 for two gallons of gas to get us oh. to the gas station. Oh. And uh, 
Chris finished the drive down there. We were so jacked to get down there. We left it Thursday night at like eight o'clock, got down there Friday at noon, straight to the water. Um, couldn't find bait, man. We looked for three hours and we couldn't, all the bait fish were 40, 50, 60 feet deep. Couldn't get to them. Uh, didn't have a net that get to them. Couldn't find any in the shallows. We had stopped at Walmart on the way down and we had bought chicken, shrimp, and pork loin wrapped in applewood bacon. <laughs> Don't ask me why we bought the pork loin wrapped in applewood bacon, but it looked good, so I bought it. You know what? If chicken will work, I'm sure pork will too. Hold yeah. on. We're, get, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, so that, that first day, uh, that first day we got sick of trying to find bait. I had marked some fish up in a shallow flat, so we were just drifting through this shallow flat, catching a ton of little baby blue cats, throwing them back. And um, then we said we were going to go look for bigger fish. We set up on it. We caught five fish less than 10 pounds that first day. And then we went up. We set up on this one this one bend in the river. We were dog tired. I mean, we just drove 14 hours to get there. We ended up catching one 43-pound fish that day. That was good enough for us. We called it. Plan the next day was we're going to go to the fish market because we suck at catching bait. And we're going to just talk to these fishermen that are bringing these fresh fish to the fish market. We're going to buy fish at the fish market. That's our plan right away. So get to the fish market. Uh, everybody told us we needed mullet. We buy these mullet. Look like they've been in the cooler for 10 days. They look terrible. We didn't look at them. They just threw them in the cooler. We paid for them and we rolled out. Second day, we'd moved a little further south than we were. Um, we set up by a grain barge. You know, everybody tells you if they're dumping grain, the fish are there. And they were there. I mean, we set up throwing pork and chicken. And I'll tell you, pork outperformed chicken 10 to 1. I mean, it really? was unbelievable. That bacon Wait, wrapped man. pork loin. Did you unwrap the bacon <laughs> off of it? Absolutely. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I am so done with this guy. Wow. <laughs> he fished with bacon. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me compose myself. Wow. All right, we'll bring him back. Okay. Proceed. <laughs> Did you just ask me if I took the bacon off the pork? Bacon is pork. Yeah, it is. Well, I understand that, but you have maybe like pork tenderloin wrapped in bacon. That's it, using the pork tenderloin is a lot different than using bacon. Bacon is sacrilegious. No, you Catfish should have like tried that, and you should have ate. <laughs> Glad Mark's not here to have a cardiac arrest. Yeah, you were that. <laughs> anyway, that day, that second day, we caught forty-three fish. I mean, we were on them. We were just like when we were there in October. It was a bunch of twenty to forty pounders. We just kept catching them on live. People were eating it up that we were using pork loin. They couldn't believe it. And again, it was outperforming chicken ten to one. Um, the last day pork prices are going to go up. The last the pork <laughs> yep. prices are going through. Everybody on this chat will be using pork tomorrow, guaranteed. Uh, we will have one with a finger in it. So they. Uh, the last day um, we moved a little further south, and that's where the story really starts happening. You know, this, 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 then again, I ain't no hundos, so pork it is. <laughs> we moved a little further south. We were trying to find the salt line, and everybody we kept talking to told us, go south, go further south, get down by the salt line. So we went, I mean, we, we were, when we caught that fish, we were five miles from the ocean. That's how close we were. Oh, wow. How far wow. south we were. Um, we got down there. Oh, there's Dave Funk. That dude, Dave Funk, is the king of 50-pound fish at Hoover. Mm -hmm. He I mean, is. He I've, is. Fished, I've probably fished 12 tournaments out there. And against some of the best uh, some of the best fishermen in Ohio, I thought, but not one of us can hold a candle to that dude because I haven't seen a 50-pounder weighed in yet. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, that dude, he's got Hoover figured out. Mm -hmm. But they um, – so we, we went down there. We were able to find – we were finding white trout. And it was a joke. As I was catching them, I was pulling them up. I'm like, oh, here's another skipjack. Here's another skipjack. Because they look just like skipjack. They just got teeth. Um, really? And we're tossing them in the cooler. And uh, and I had a rod get smoked. I mean, this thing, I look back, it is buried to the motor and peel and drag. And I'm like, oh, Chris, there he is, you know. Pick this thing up. And I'm like, I'd never fought anything like this fish in my life. I'm fighting this fish. I'm like, dude, this thing is pulling. And <laughs> people will be slinging whole pork steaks. <laughs> so... Uh, it ended up being a bull red fish and it was probably, I don't know, 40 inches or so. Oh, wow. I know nothing, I know nothing about redfish. Yeah. I'm bummed out because it's not a catfish. And the people in my chat are just going berserk. Like, I don't think you realize what you caught. And I'm like, 
It's not a cat. I just tossed it over the edge. I didn't take any. I took one crappy <laughs> picture of it. I didn't weigh it. I didn't measure it. I just threw it back in the water. And the people in my chat are losing grip because I didn't weigh or measure this redfish. Yeah. And, my uh, uncle lives down in Corpus Christi during the during the winter time and fishes for them nonstop. He loves it. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it was. I pulled up. Yeah, like, I don't know this thing. I'm holding this thing, and I'm like, I don't know what this thing is. It looks kind of cool. Toss it over the water. Boys, 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 it's a drum. Well, you would love it. A drum. They're delicious. Saltwater See, somebody drum. told me they were redfish. Somebody told me they were red drum, but they were not a catfish. That's, That's right. right. Yeah, Can you set them up drip? for bait? That's my next question. So Tim from Epic Catfish said, I can't believe you threw that thing back. You should have cut it up for bait. And I'm like, you know, thinking about it now, we were struggling for bait. bait. What was I doing? Yeah. I imagine my chat would have gone absolutely insane if I started cutting <laughs> that thing up. The game more than would have showed up to the ramp. I guarantee it. <clears throat> but so we tossed it back and we caught we caught those white trout. And this is the first day of our trip. And the last, this is the first day of our trip we have fresh bait and the last day of our trip total. Um, we haven't been able to find bait anywhere. So we have these white trout, trying pork belly chunks and strips, not bacon, thick strip. It probably worked. It worked in Louisiana. Uh, I mean, it worked. <laughs> so that's all I know. We hammered them on pork, on, on pork loin wrapped in bacon. <laughs> Applewood smoked bacon. That probably has, that's probably why they bit. I <laughs> You to hook me. <laughs> the trick is using shaking pork chops. chops. Everybody at Uber, <laughs> Dave, you can't do that to me when I'm drinking coffee. <laughs> so <clears throat> this is our first time having fresh bait. We ran. We were doubting. We were doubting. We went too far. Like we were like, this is crazy. We went way too far. I mean, the water's super salty. We're catching these white trout, which are known saltwater fish. We're catching red fish, known saltwater fish. I'm like, I said, we're way too far south. I said, we're, we're, we're in the ocean. I'm all bummed out. Trolling motor breaks at the first spot we set up on. Trolling motor takes a crap. Something, I think it broke a magnet down in the head or something. Uh, now we're anchored. Current comes out of nowhere. Now we're in six mile an hour current. Can't We're throwing 20 ounces. Can't keep our stuff on the bottom. I look at Chris super defeated. And I'm like, what did we do? Like, why did we not just go back where we caught 40 fish yesterday? And he's like, oh, we're going to find them. We're going to find them. And a guy in my chat actually comes on there and he's like, he's like, hey, there's this spot I want to tell you about. And he, he tells me about the spot. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. He's like, there's a bunch of big fish there. This guy that I know catches fish there all the time. And I'm like, okay, that's cool, you know. I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, that's how that's how I take everybody who tells me about exactly. the spot everybody knows about. We're anchored up catching these white trout because it's the only thing we can catch. Well, I thought we were cat fishermen, but today we're white trout fishermen. And this Lyle guy, loves he's trout. Up, huh? Lyle loves trout. If any, if any species of any species, yep. we're fair. we're we're set up catching these trout, and his boat comes flying up to us, and he stops right next to us. He said, hey, are you guys catfishing? And I don't know if you guys know anything about the fishermen in Louisiana, but when you tell them you drove 14 hours to catch catfish, every single one of them will laugh you out of the state. <laughs> we talked to 20 people and told every one of them we were down there to catch catfish, and every single one of them called us idiots. And, and they're like, why would you come here to catch catfish? And I'm like, you guys got the best catfishery in the country. Yeah. And they're like, no, we don't. We got the best red tree in the country. And I'm like, there was actually guys that same day we caught that state record fish. There was a guy at the fish market who's like, why would you guys go catch catfish? He said, come on, go red fishing with us. And we thought about it. Creole, he's not kidding. <laughs> he's not kidding. Every single person I talked to at the restaurants we stopped at, the gas stations we stopped at, every single one of them could not believe we were there to catch catfish. So this guy on this boat comes up and he's like, are you guys catfishing? I'm like, man, we're already having a bad enough day. Like, yeah, we're catfishing. Come on, just give it to us. Like, I thought we were about to get reamed by this guy because we had everybody we told that to. And he says, right up there, I caught a 93-pounder, and he's pointing up up river from where we're fishing. And uh, and I'm like, okay, okay. And I just happened to look at where that guy told us to fish, and this guy is pointing right to the right. exact same spot this guy said to fish where he knows guys that's caught 100-pounders. And I'm like, I don't know. I said, so I look at Chris, and – and he looks at me and um, he says, well, there might be something to it. And I'm like, that's two different people. I said, and we got nothing. Like, we, we're not catching anything. So we got to try something, you know. Might as well. And so 
So we, we finished catching bait and we went scanning. We drove by that spot. We went scanning. We went clear out to the ocean scanning, come back scanning. I couldn't mark anything that I was 100% sure was a catfish. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I said, I don't, I, I was finding some giant mark marks on the side scan, but they just, they just didn't have that catfish look to them. And after catching that redfish, I'm like, I could very well be a redfish. So, and we were fishing. I mean, we, we were scanning 30 to from 12 to 30 feet of water and, you know, side scan, it's kind of tough to use in 12 feet of water anyways. So I wasn't finding anything glued to the bottom. I wasn't finding those big giant, looks like rock piles, but you can tell it's a fish. I couldn't find anything like that. Everything was suspended off the bottom, shadows way down below them. And we come back by that spot that two people have now told me about. And I marked this fish and I'm like, I'm like, man, I said, I don't, I don't know. I said, it's the best looking mark we've had. It very may well be a catfish. And he's like, let's just try. He said, you know what? He said, let's go home. We're going to leave here in an hour anyways. Let's just set our lines out here for an hour, see what happens. And we're at the point of giving up. Like we're defeated on this third day. And, uh, and I'm like, it's worth a shot. So we set up, we go up just North of where we wanted to go. We drop the anchor. Cause I don't have a trolling motor anymore. We drop the anchor and wouldn't, you know, in that time we were scanning. Now we're on slack tide on top of it. Can't keep the boat straight. We got one anchor. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm just ready to give up. And he's like, well, let's just fish this spot. What we ended up doing is he has an ammo can that we keep all of his, uh, all the sinkers in. We ended up tying a cradle knot around that ammo can, <laughs> toss it off the back of the boat to keep the back of the boat straight. Like that's, that, this is where we are, right? <laughs> I had ended my live cause my phone died. I was live on TikTok the whole time. Everybody's laughing at us. And, uh, and we throw the ammo can out. We sit down, we throw all of our rods out. Phone's dead. We're sitting there and I'm talking to him and I watch this one rod. It, it just, it just, it had tension on it because I tightened it down and it just popped straight up and the line went super slack, but it never moved. And I'm like, that's odd. So I watched it for a little bit. I look back over at that line swimming up river and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like, there's a fish on there. So I pick it up, reel down on it. I'm like, man, I said, it feels like a good one. And then that sucker, I, I, I'm i just in the habit. I always loosen my drag, right? Because I always fish with them tight and then I loosen them when I feel the fish. I never felt the fish, but I'm like, I'm going to loosen my drag. I loosen, I start reeling down, and that thing took off like a bat out of hell as fast as it could swim back towards the Mississippi River. And I was like, dude, I said, I don't know what this is. I said, but I think I just hooked into a school bus. (laughs) I would pull that fish 10 feet. It would take off and take another 50 feet. I'd get it 10 feet closer. It'd take off again. This one wasn't on live. I fought that fish for somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes which is the longest I've ever fought a fish since I started catfishing. Yeah. And I'm telling Chris the whole time, I'm like, dude, whatever this is, I said, this is huge. This is going to be a giant. And we fought it and we fought it. And it finally gets close to the boat. I can see the line and straight, straight down right below the rod. And I'm like, I think he's going to give up. And I felt him start rolling. And I'm like, dude, it's definitely a catfish. I said, it's rolling right below the boat. I said, get ready. Cause when this thing comes up, I said, this thing is a giant. It rolls, it rolls, it stops rolling. It's it takes another small dive down, swims straight under the boat, gives up, floats up, hits the bottom of the boat, and breaks me off. We heard it. Boom. Bottom of the boat, 30-minute fight, gone. Oh man. Wow. <laughs> I look over at Chris and I'm like, I'm like, dude, this is it. I said, like, this is how we cap our evening. Like, I said, this we made a terrible decision coming down here. I sat down, I'm defeated. I didn't even for 10 minutes. I didn't even look at that rod. I actually threw it down so hard. I thought I broke it. And uh, I sat back down in my seat and Chris is looking at me and I'm looking at him and I'm like, we might as well go live. Tell people our Louisiana trips over. I said this, what a joke this is. I go live and, and as it's loading, I was like, man, I sat down, I said a prayer. I said, God, I said, just give us one fish to remember this trip, please. Like this has been brutal. Just give us one fish. And we only wanted a 50 pounder. Chris wanted one 50 pound fish. He'd never, he hasn't broke 50 pounds yet. And I'm like, just give us one, one decent fish to remember this trip. Give us a good ride home. I turn my live on. I'm telling the story about how I broke off. I throw the other rod back out and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Right before I went live, the same exact bite happened and I missed it. So then I'm really defeated. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm just done. So I turn the live on. I'm talking to live. I don't give two cares about my polls behind me. I'm just talking to the people on live, having a good time. And, um, and, 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 and I said, I said a prayer for a fish. I look up and there's a guy that said, man, he said, you're so down on yourself. He said, uh, he said, um, 
every his name was Ruck Me Funning. That's the guy's name on, <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> and uh, he said, he said, man, he said, you're so hard on yourself. He said, everything happens for a reason, man. He said, just have your chin up. And I looked over at Chris, and this is if you watch the video, you see it. I looked over at Chris, and there was another guy on my TikTok who had said something else, and I was replying to him. His name was Mustang. And I was like, you know what? Mustang's right, too. I said, Chris, everything happens for a reason. And I turn back around, and I look at my rods, and that same exact bite happens again. From the time I said it to, like, three seconds later, I'm like, I'm like, you know what, Mustang? You're right. Everything happens for a reason. And I look up, and I'm like, and here it is. Watch this. And I stood up, and I'm like <laughs> – I watch this video. I watch that video of us catching the fish anytime I'm having a bad day. Because if you've ever watched the Three Stooges, we were only missing Chad to have the Three Stooges on that boat. Because it was it was a cluster. Wait, which, wait, which one am I? Mm, curly. Probably Curly. curly. I'd say you're curly. curly. I have an emoji for all three of you. Go ahead. <laughs> but th- th- third time's a charm. Do you see that? Read between the lines. Third yeah. time is a charm. Go ahead. Well, the good news is this is our third bite, too. So you're just playing along with the story. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, and here it is, you know, so I stand up and I am terrified of missing this bite again. So I'm like, I'm like, Chris, when should I reel down? Like, I don't even know how to fish. If you watch the video, I'm like, when should I reel down? Chris, Chris, when do you think I should reel down? He's like, I don't know. He said, does the fish have it? And clearly the line is swimming. Like at this point, it's swimming past the boat. I'm watching this fish get out in front of the boat at this point. And he's like, uh, he's like, just let him tighten the line back up. So the second the line starts to get tight. You see me, I reeled, I cranked down. I probably get 60 feet of line in before I get to the fish. And I pick it up and I'm like, it's there, but it's not a big one. I said, but it's a fish, you know? And right as soon as I said that, that thing dives super hard. And you see me, I'm like, oh God, oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. I'm feeding line out of the rod. And the fish just gives up. After that, the fish gives up. He floats to the top of the water. And about 30 feet beside the boat, this, uh, oh, that's good news. Um. He floats to the top of the water about 30 two. feet. That's worth two times. Uh, 30 feet out beside the boat. And at this point, all we see is this fin. I mean, it's this big. like, And it's moving back and forth. <laughs> and the first thing out of my mouth, I don't know why. I'm like, is that a sea turtle? Like, I don't know why I thought it was a sea turtle. I don't know why I said that. I've had 10 people ask me why I said that. The only thing I can think was, I'm looking at a fin this big. And... And Chris has, has his phone light, like it's going to do anything, shining it out in the water. And I'm like, is it a sea turtle? What is it? And he's like, dude, I don't know what it is. And at that time, it rolled up and I saw its dorsal fin because it came up on its side. And at that minute, I knew. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I said, that's a giant fish. I said, I said, Chris, we got to put that thing in the boat. Whatever we do, we got to put that thing in the boat. So we, I mean, it. it from the what's crazy is from the time I set the hook on that fish to the time I put it in the net is something like 38 seconds. Oh wow! It, I felt it super fast. It gave up, floated to the top of the water. I pulled it to the boat. Chris nets it, and um, so I he's he's fumbling with the net trying to get. It's not that the fish is not wanting to go in the net. It's that the fish is too big to go in the net, and I have the biggest net RS nets makes people talk about my fish or my net all the time. It's too big. It's too heavy. And here we are in the middle of the night on new year's Eve with a fish that doesn't fit in it. Yeah. And, and I just remember um, Chris and I talked about this today at work. I, the feeling I had when that fish came up to the top and I realized it was a catfish. I just want to relive that four seconds over and over and over again, because there is no feeling that, that, as an outdoorsman that I've experienced, that's that, that takes away from that. I mean, it was, I started shaking. I, you'd have thought I shot a 200 inch deer. I started shaking, couldn't talk. I was freaking out and I'm, I'm yelling at Chris. I'm like, is it in the net? And he's like, no. And I'm screaming, is it in the net? And he's like, no. And then finally he says, yes. But he's like, yes, no. And I'm like, then get it in the net. I'm like jumping all over the boat, screaming at him. And, uh, and oh, we finally get that fish in the net, man. And when we put that fish, we pulled the fish up over the side of the boat. And that was when I first, I really got a good look at it. And I mean, the head on that fish was, I mean, it, when I, when that picture I'm holding across my forearm, it goes from my wrist past my elbow is how wide the head on that fish. I mean, look at the thing. Wow. It's man. Look at the, so look at the dorsal fin. It's as big as my head. 
Yeah. That is a giant. And it was – that's my favorite picture right there. Go back but one picture, This Chad. one right here? Yeah. I mean – That is a beast. And, and now, now Corey, how big a guy are you? I'm 6'2", 260. <laughs> So that gives, I mean, that gives everybody an idea of how big that fish really is. And that that fish, I just remember we put that fish in the floor of the boat, and I, I, I I'm just mesmerized looking at this fish. I'm telling everybody, my like, guys, we just broke hundred pounds. There was no no doubt in my mind we broke broke a hundred. Now, at one time I said the fish was one twenty. I I did say that. I said I said guys, I think this fish gonna go 100, 120 pounds. We get the fish in the boat. The first thing Chris does, because Chris fishes a lot with Ryan Bortz. So the first thing Chris does, he FaceTimes Ryan Bortz. Ryan's looking at it, and, and he's like, what is that? And Chris's like, that's a 100-pound fish. And Ryan's like, ain't no what. And Ryan, I ain't no way. I don't uh, know thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Chris sets him down, and, um, and we – I, we're looking at this fish together, and Ryan's in the background like, Wyatt, Wyatt fish. I can hear him screaming at us. We're just looking at the fish laying on the floor. And uh, and and we, we put it in the net, and we're, we're looking for the scale. And Chris grabs the scale, and kind of being funny, he's like, it's a 110-pound scale. And I was like, if we break the scale, we're calling the warden. That was the first thing out of my mouth. I said, if we break the scale, we're calling the warden. He said, I do not sound like that, Corey. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good myself. Come on, you guys can comment on. It. I know he's a I, I, YouTuber. Oh, I love Ryan. I, oh yeah, he's a dude. I was best with him the other day. I like Ryan too. Ryan is a solid dude. Him and I have fished together a couple of times. <laughs> Creole Ryan, yeah, you do. Yeah, he does. <laughs> so we're uh, so we got Ryan on the phone, and and me and Chris are. I don't even know what we're saying to each other. We're talking, but I I can't remember anything from the second we put that fish in the net, really. But I remember him saying that the net on, the scale only goes to 110. I kind of laughed about it. And he, he looks at me and he says, he said, the state record is 114. I looked this up. And I'm like, why, why did you look that up? And he's like, because we have a, I knew we had a chance to beat it. And I'm like, dude, we even caught a fish all day. What are you talking about? <laughs> so we get the fish in the net. And, and, and I remember the first time we picked up on that scale and it went beep, beep, beep and said overloaded. And I looked at Chris. And he looked at me, and the tail of the fish was still on the ground of the boat. And I'm like, he's like, no, 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 we got to do it again. We got to do it. We messed something up. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. We did. So we set it down. We reset the scale. We pick it up, and it beep, 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 overloaded. And I'm like, dude, it says it's overloaded. And I'm like, let's do it a third time. Justin, he hired Ryan scream like that, catching a skipjack. <laughs> <laughs> So we wait a third time, and again, it says overloaded. So at this point, Ryan now believes that we really do have a 100-pound fish. So he hangs up on Chris. He's texting us numbers. I need to learn hick and knees. He's texting us numbers to every state official he can find. Uh, everybody in the chat, we're now up to like 900 people in my, my TikTok live chat because I was live on TikTok when I caught this fish. And they're all like texting me every single – uh, marina around us that has scales or a tank we can put it in. There's people calling the sheriff's office. There's people calling the local police, the local news stations, people calling the poacher line. Every wildlife agency or law enforcement agency around Empire, Louisiana that night got it. I know they did because I called half of them myself. And uh, we, we get the fish. We, we get it in my live well. Now, my live well is not undersized. I tournament catfish. I care about the conservation of catfish. When I built my live well, I built an 85-gallon live well that's 74 inches long, 16 inches wide, 22 inches tall. It's plenty big enough for all the fish that I catch. Where I failed with my live well, and I will admit this because there were people that called me out on it, the lid to my live well was barely big enough to put that fish in my live well. In the excitement of the moment, I got him in there. You know, it, he was in a lot well. He was upright. I have an oxygen system in my boat. The fish was very well taken care of. And I made it a priority to make sure that that fish was very well taken care of, all the way to the point I made Chris right on his knees, leaning into the live well with the fish. <laughs> so the fish, <laughs> I don't want to know what sweet nothings Chris was whispering in that fish's ear, but he oh was very God. well taken care of. <laughs> and, uh, we ride back, treacherous ride back, about wrecked the boat several times. 
Chris doesn't know how to start a generator. My phone was dying. I let go of the helm and I start the generator. We hit a, a wall, an underwater damn wall, because Ooh. I wasn't paying attention. Chris wasn't paying attention. Wrecked the prop on my boat. Long story short, we make it back. We're at the boat ramp and everybody's like, we want to see this thing. So I said, I had a, I have my tournament scales with me. I run a tournament series. I have my tournament scales in the back of the truck. We go up, we set the scales up. We get everybody all set up, looking at the scales. It's a nice, pretty view. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go get the fish. Remember when I told you my lid was too small on my live well? He went in. He wasn't coming out. Oh. Thankfully, Chris has a whole, he's a mechanic. He's got a whole truck full of tools. Disassemble, we disassembled my entire boat right there in at the marina. Fish is still doing great. He's still, I mean, he's still on auction. He's still in water. We took the entire floor off the live well, pulled the metal up, cut the metal back. So we had plenty of room to pull this fish out of the live well. We get him out and everybody, I didn't know at the time, but everybody in chat's like, I hear drills. What are they doing? I hear, I hear drills. We were taking the whole boat apart because the fish was coming out of the live well. <clears throat> we get him out. I carry him up. That's when you see the picture of him laying across the front of my body. I'm carrying him up to the scales. And uh, I said, all right, guys, here we go. Ryan Bortz. It was a great thing to be a part of, even though I was 10 hours away. Just so you know, we invited Ryan. He turned us down. Just so yeah. everybody. Wow. Bro. <laughs> and uh, we called Damn. him way before we were in Kentucky and said we'd pick him up. Not only did we invite him, we offered him a ride. He'll he never ride. live that down. No. He'll never live it down. Him or my kayak, Mike. We invited both of them. Oh, wow. That fish would have been twice the size of Kayak Mike. Mm. Yeah, what, kayak Mike, I, I would have loved for Mike, Kayak Mike to hold it just to get a picture of it with him. Yeah. I mean, you can see his feet in his driver's license picture. Imagine what that fish would look like. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mike. We love you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sound like a Dockery joke. <laughs> no, I actually think Kayak Mike is shorter than you and Dockery both. Really? Yes. Well, he's a little guy, but he's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot of fight in him. He does. I'm sure. And Ryan said, "I got to make a living." <laughs> so <laughs> we get this fish, and I carry it down, and I I set it down in my scale. I said, my 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 scale certified. I bought it from uh, the tournament scale place. That everybody buys their scales from. They send you a certificate. It's certified. I set it down, and it says one nineteen point four five. I was watching Chris at that point. It, I look at it. We look at each other. And I'm like, we got to call the warden. And Chris is like, yeah, I've been trying to call him for two hours. I can't get a hold of him. And I'm like, well, get a hold of him. Like, I don't care what you got to do. Get a hold of the guy. I grab my phone. I show everybody on TikTok Live the scale. Everybody's freaking out, you know. So we put the fish back in the live well. And we're walking around on live. And at this point, I'm like, I'm low-key panicking now. Like, I do have the state record in my live well. Chris and I have just broke the Louisiana state record. A million things running through my mind. And I'm like, we can't get a hold of the DNR. Like, this isn't something you don't prepare yourself for. And I'm calling. Chris is calling. My mom and dad are watching on the live. They're calling every marina around. I've got marinas calling me saying they'd love to help, but they don't have certified scales. Um, to give a shout out to one of them, Joshua's marina. He's like, listen, man, I got a tank out in the bayou. He said, bring that fish over here. We'll go put him in my tank out in the bayou. And I'm like, Man, it's 40 minutes to your I don't I don't want to leave this fish in the boat, you know? So I'm talking, I'm talking with Creole on the phone. He's like, Man, I can't help you. He said, Everybody I know is way north of you. You know, it's two hours to get to him. It's 45 minutes to get to Joshua's Marina to put this fish in the bayou. This fish is already stressed, you know. And and so it, it hits me, you know, as a tournament director, as an angler, as a conservationist, I I'm gonna put him back. And Chris kind of looks at me and he's like, I said, I said, man, I said, we broke it. Like we broke the state record. There's 900 people who watched us catch it. There's now 1400 people in here who just watched us weigh it. I said, let's do a really good video of us taking the fish from the live well, putting it on a scale, recording the weight there. I said, and then we'll do a really good video of us releasing the fish at the boat. I said, in my mind, we caught the fish. In my mind, we broke the state of Louisiana state record. Yep. In my mind, I drove oh, yeah. past Creole and went down on his river and broke state record. Drove right by him. And he beat him. She told me where he was. <coughs> and, and and Chris, you know, I thought he was Chris is he's got a he's got a little temper, Chris does. He gets mad really easy. And I thought it was gonna go the other way. And he looks right at me. He said, Corey, I think you're making the right call. And I said, 
I think I'm making the right call too, you know? I so I walk back over to the camera. I'm defeated at this point. It, it's been – we've had the fish in our possession for probably about an hour and 45 minutes. I'm starting to worry about the fish. There's nothing – the fish isn't showing any signs that there's anything wrong with him. But I'm starting to worry about the fish just because I don't, I don't like – I don't like holding a 10 pound fish for three hours, let alone holding a 118 pound fish for that long. And Ryan was on Google making calls for 45 minutes. I mean, ever there, there are people in Louisiana have never been called by all 50 States in one night. Like I bet you somebody <laughs> in every state in the country called that warden. Now. They're like, what the hell is going on right now? And, there's uh, no excuse. Israel, for them not going up down there. And there's, so, there's no excuse for them not certifying that fish. Yeah. And and you know and so we we tell, we go back to the camera. I'm defeated, but <clears throat> as I told you earlier, you know Chris and I did great. We picked a great spot. We picked a great fish. That fish wasn't caught by Chris and I. That fish wasn't delivered by Chris and I. That was a gift from God. We specifically prayed for that fish, you know, and and God delivered on our prayers. I could not, in my right mind, Chris could not, in his right mind, kill a fish that God specifically delivered. I can't imagine that fish might be 60, 70, 80 years old. He doesn't deserve to die because he was hungry, you know? So Chris and I together, you know, we, 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 I said, you know, I said, the Lord delivered in our prayers, and I don't think it's right for us to kill the fish. Chris agreed. We walked over to the camera, and I said, guys, I said, you know, I said, I said, well, we thank, we thank the Lord for the opportunity to catch his fish. He delivered on a prayer that we specifically asked for. He put the fish in our possession. This is exactly <coughs> what we asked for, a fish to remember this trip. Not only will we remember this trip today, we will remember this trip for the rest of our lives because of this Absolutely. fish. Absolutely. That's right. And I, I, said, I can't get a hold of a warden. I, I've, I've talked to the sheriff's department. I've talked to the poacher line. I've talked to the local police. I've talked to the people in the bars. I've talked to... Um, I've talked to, I, I talked to somebody at the DNR who told me to kill the fish. They said, wanted me to kill the fish and they wanted to put it on the ice and absolutely not multiple reasons. One, I said no right away because I'm not killing the fish. I've been a, an outdoorsman my whole life. I've bought cows from the butcher. I've bought pigs from the butcher. You have dead weight, you have hanging weight and everybody knows what happens when that fit, when that animal goes in the freezer, it, it shrinks so if I if I would have chose to kill the fish, and I didn't think about this till days later, if I would have chose to kill the fish that has the current record beat by four point zero five pounds, the fish has already lost a pound and a half just being in my possession from stress. If we kill the fish that night and we put it on ice on Sunday night, no game warden is going to respond on Monday. They've already told us no. No biologist is going to respond on Monday. They've already told us no. So now we go twenty four hours at fish on ice. We go another 24 hours. The soonest they can get somebody there to certify the fish is Tuesday at 9 a.m. That's another 24 hours of this fish on ice. We now give this fish 48 hours on ice. Everything that's on ice shrinks. Everything. So now you're putting me in the position that if we did kill this fish, it may not even be the state record by the time he gets here. Right. That's right. And, and as I said, I didn't think of that until days later. I told the, the agent, no, absolutely not right away. I said, I'm not killing this fish. She told me I was crazy. She, she legit said, she said, that's what everybody does. And I said, well, I'm not everybody. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have either. And more important for me to put that fish back in the river and watch that fish swim off. And maybe one day some eight-year-old kid catches it and he does decide to kill it for the record. You know what? Everybody has their legal rights to do whatever they want with the fish they catch. Yeah, that was your fish. Yeah. It was my fish. You catch it, it's your fish. It's your fish. I chose to put him back in the river and let him swim away. And, and. Everybody on TikTok that night, and not only on TikTok, on Facebook for the next five or six days, all Chris and I saw was our faces everywhere with what a great decision we made. And and I was like, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a hard decision, but it was it was mentally draining. As we watched that fish swim off, what you guys don't see, because I'm a chicken and I didn't want to do it on camera, I, I started crying. Like well, hell yeah. <laughs> like, what we just Get did. That. What we just did was unbelievable. And I wasn't sobbing like a girl, but my eyes started watering. And and I looked at Chris, and he looked at me, and he said, dude, what did we do? And I was like, in my mind, we broke the Louisiana state record. That's what that's we right. did. Damn straight you did. I said, yeah, I said, and there's no one that's going to tell me that there's not. So in the next couple of days, I followed up on, is my video proof? My, sta my scales are certified. The problem is, is right on the application for a state record in Louisiana, it says fish must be visually inspected 
and certified by a biologist. They're all by awesome. a Louisiana yeah. Department of Wildlife Biologists or whatever, however it was worded. So it may never count as an official record, but what is that piece of paper doesn't mean anything to me. You know, I, I'm already on all the teams that I want to be on. You know, I'm already I have a rod sponsor, I have a reel sponsor, my line sponsor, my hooks are sponsored, my boat was sponsored. So it's nothing like that. I wasn't chasing clout in that aspect of anything. I already get to do what I love and represent some of the greatest brands in the country, in my opinion. Obviously, everybody has their own. Um, and those guys, I mean, the, the teams that I'm on, Toughest Frickin' Rods, uh, Cast King, Angler Innovations, um, those teams allow me the opportunity to go and do what I love. They allow me the opportunity to teach people what I know about catfishing and travel the country and catfish. So that piece of paper meant nothing to me. I heard from almost every one of my sponsors that day within 12 hours of releasing that fish. I heard from every one of them. They all commended me. They all said, great job. Um, and, and they all were happy to have you on the team, you know? So I think I got more notori notoriety out of releasing that fish than I ever would have having that certificate. But here's the thing, not, not to interrupt you, but here's the thing. Those people that watched you that night and the next day, they got screwed out of knowing that they watched you catch a state record yeah. and you didn't get credit for it. They're the ones that are paying the bill for them guys not doing their job. I guess that's one take on it. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was still wild, man. And it brings up so many crazy emotions. I mean, that's, Chris and I fish tournaments all over the country. The guy's my best friend in the whole world. And I mean, I don't, I can't imagine that I would have wanted to share that experience with any other human in the world, man. It was, and, and we talk, I mean, we, we worked together today and we talked about it for, we talked about that fish probably all day. You know, his little brother was with us and, and, and as much as, I mean, I caught the fish, but as much as I caught the fish and as much excitement that it brought me, he deserves to be just as excited and he deserves, I mean, it was a team catch. It was That's our right. fish, you know, That's right. we caught that fish together and, and there's going to be an article coming out in Louisiana sportsman. And I told the guy, I said, if you write in there that Corey Jeffers caught that fish, delete the article because it wasn't just me, Chris and I caught that fish. You're a team. Yeah. Yep. And we're a team in Ohio. We're a team in Kentucky. I don't care if we go to California, we're still a team, you know, um, we put a lot into this and, and, and there's days that I'm off my game and there's days that he's off his game. And without one or the other, we wouldn't be nearly as good as we are as a team, as a team in fishing tournaments, you know? So it's been, it's been a crazy ride with that fish guys. I don't, I don't know oh, how yeah. else to say it, but it has been a crazy ride. But I was going to say earlier, you know, when starting from your trip down, you know, I don't know how many times, the crap start of, you know, when things are not going right at the beginning of the trip, often they end up in and something really, really, really good like that. And yours is epic. That's all you can say about your trip. You know, that was an epic ending to a, a frustrating start. I mean, you, I think you had just about everything go wrong except for that. And that we did. That. We did. And, and, and the crazy thing about all of this story, and we did it that night, and I'll do it until the day I die. Uh, as Bugman said, you know, all glory in that whole story, that all goes to God. You know, that was, I believe that was his plan from the minute we stepped foot in Louisiana that week. Chris is new in his faith. Um, he, he's, he, he's recently started his walk with Jesus. And, uh, and when I sat down and specifically prayed for that fish, God didn't let me catch that fish because I wanted to catch that fish. God let me catch that fish to show Chris, like, Check this out. You know, I, I don't I don't believe that's how prayers work. I don't believe prayers work that I pray for something. God gives it to me because I want it. But what a story Chris will tell to the thousands of people he talks to about. the. the I mean, absolutely. It, absolutely. I mean, I, it, I, real quick, I got, I got to make sure I give out a shout out to Amelia and Magnus who are also watching from be, behind the scenes. I had a message earlier for a special thank you to some kids. So here's to you, little ones. There you go. So it was, just, it was cool, man. It, it's been that fish has I don't know that it's opened up a lot of opportunities to me. That fish, you know, for a long time in the catfish industry and just in the fishing industry in a while, there was a lot of people that didn't like me or had had a skewed view about me. And, and 
as I've continued on my journey, I told my story on the last video. You're more than welcome to go watch it when we talked last time. Um, I'm in a much better place now than I was two years ago, and I really hope, I really think that that fish kind of helped me help me get over that part of my life. You know, that was that yeah. fish was a turning page in my life, oh, yeah. and and I mean, I, I've been blessed beyond belief even since the last time we talked. I mean, the, the blessings just keep coming. Everything I'm praying for is happening. My life is on the up and up. We started a tournament trail here in Ohio that's doing phenomenal. Um, and, and, and as everything is growing in the fishing industry, man, the, the, the support, the camaraderie that's happening inside of the catfish community has been, has been amazing, man. And then again, I mean, it all goes back to God, man. I think God put me in the fishing community and on TikTok and, and doing what I'm doing for a very specific reason. And, uh, and, and I'll keep glorifying him through all of it. <laughs> Roger says, that's an incredible story. I would watch this movie. <laughs> and, you know, and, I think two things that are your thing too there is maybe one is, you know, they'll look at, you know, all those people that laughed and continue to laugh at Creole for catching catfish down there. Maybe it'll put some, you know, more spotlight on catfishing yeah. in Louisiana, first of all, and maybe it'll actually make the DNR think, think a little bit more as well. Maybe it might not, but it may get somebody, looking at it a little bit more obviously you had a unique situation where it was literally new year's eve at like 11 30 at night and that's be hard to get a hold of anybody yeah but you know one of the things that i thought was respectful not only just that you put that fish back is i watched your video when you guys were driving home and you were talking to everybody on tiktok about you know why not to be upset at the dnr and i thought that was commendable you know it was New Year's Eve. People were out with their families celebrating the new year. Probably half of them were intoxicated and wouldn't have been able to read the numbers on the scale anyway or whatever. But, you know, I thought that was really commendable to you to go on there and, you know, because people, you know, people do get upset. Like, oh, well, why couldn't they just get you know, their butt down there and do it? It's like, you know, people have family. It's in the midnight, you know, whatever. It's midnight on New Year's Eve. And, and, and I'm not... It's it, it's it's the new life that I've partaking in. It, it's the new walk that I'm taking in life. I don't hold grudges and I don't get mad anymore, you know. So I look at I look at a situation. It's never about why is this happening to me. It's more of what can I learn from the situation, you know, or why did this situation happen? You know, a lot of people jump right to this is horrible. This is happening to me. Why would God do this? Why would this happen? And and when you take a step back, which I have learned to do over the last couple of years, take pull yourself out of the situation that you're in. Look at it from the outside. And that's when you start seeing, you know, it's New Year's Eve. These people are out with their families. OK, the the game warden, like, it is his job, right? He needs to come to work. He's he's out having a good time on New Year's Eve with his family and he's drunk. He gets in his car. He drives to where this fish. He gets in an accident from me to the fish. Is that fish worth that? You know, he could cause harm to somebody else. He calls harm to. Some, and I'm not saying that a game warden would do that. I'm just telling you the scenarios. You know, it if we hold happened. these guys to an to a standard that they've one they've never been held to or an unimaginable standard, right? It is new year's Eve at midnight. Nobody's working new year's Eve at midnight. Oh. Now, if somebody would have called in and said, I had a truck full of dead mallards that I just shot at night, I'm sure somebody would have been there. One Derek, have been up been the border. Oh yeah. They'd have been there. All right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, and, and, and I, I, I can't, for whatever reason, in my mind, in my feelings, I can't find the audacity to be mad at the Louisiana DNR. Because, again, I don't take the DNR out of it, take me out of it, take Chris out of it. You know, I don't believe that it happened because of any of us. And and when your belief is truly that it was a gift, you know, I returned the gift where it came from, you know. Yeah. And that's, that's where we're at. And that's what I really – when I made that video the next day, because I was getting – I don't want to know the messages the DNR got because I know there were some really mad people. Oh, I'm sure. And that's why I made that video. I got to thinking about that on the way home. And I said, guys, don't, 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 don't stoop to that level. You know, let's use it as yeah. an education. You know, guys, there's going to be guys fishing at midnight on New Year's Eve. So maybe we should have somebody on call in case this were to happen. You that's know? a great, great thought. I got to tell you something, Corey. This don't have anything to do with you catching your fish or, are telling this fabulous story that we all got to listen to tonight. But it hasn't been that long ago that you was on Catfish Weekly with us, and we had a lot of fun. We did. We really did. We had a yeah. lot of fun. But you're a different person today than you was that night. 
I am a different person today. Than you I are, and, and thank you for that. Although <laughs> there's no one that had any more fun that night <laughs> than me, I promise. You. Right, <laughs> because we got to say some things about some people that I'd love to do again. But that doesn't put me in the spot where you are today. And buddy, I'm proud of you. You've done well. Thank you. That means yeah. a lot. And and, yeah, and that's what I am trying to do. You know, I had a lot of pent up rage and I had a lot of anger then. A lot of anger. And it wasn't just towards the people that I talked about that night. Um, and 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 I I actually just had a conversation with Kayak Mike a couple nights ago. And 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 I told Kayak Mike on the phone. I would love for him to set up a podcast with me, him, and Bob Denon. I would love the opportunity to apologize to Bob Denon for how I handled the situation. I don't believe everything that I talked about was in the wrong, but I do believe that I did handle that situation wrong. And other situations as well. I jumped on a train back then that maybe I shouldn't have. I I, 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 I don't know. I, but I am. I, I am truly leading a different life than I was six months ago, than I was a year ago, you know. And, and, and like I said, I told the story of my life uh, a couple – what happened to me a couple years ago on the last show. I'm not going to get into it again. I don't like to keep bringing it up. Yeah. I learned then that, that I was living life for the wrong reasons, um, and, and, and I hadn't found Christ. I hadn't done anything that, that, that I would, could be proud of what I did. So I have, I, I have built a secure foundation. Um, and, and my wife and I and my family, my kids, we have completely restarted our life and we're on a, We're on a different path to life, you know, and, and now again, it's about it's about education. It's about conservation. It's what can I do to help the next generation cat fishermen? What can I do to help the cat fishermen that don't get to fish because of X, Y, Z? You know, I take people out on my boat. Um, uh, I mean, there was a local cat fisherman in here that had had some bad stuff happen to him last week. I got some extra gear laying around here, you know, take the gear, you know, it, to me, catfishing saved my life and not only saved my life, catfishing allowed me an opportunity to live an entirely different life than I ever thought was possible. And it's odd to say that catfishing did it, but those nights on the boat with your best bud in the hardest times of your life, they will change a man. Yep. There's no doubt. And, and no it's, doubt. it has been an incredible ride, man. It's, I've seen the highs. I've seen the lows. I don't ever want to see the lows again, but I'll enjoy the highs while they're here. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. And do you guys care if I plug the tournament trail real fast? We do. Right. So uh, since then, you know, back then we talked about what was wrong with the catfishing community. And, and I had a lot of suggestions. Well, if somebody would do this, if somebody would do this, if people would do this in my revelation of life, I'm, I just plugged myself in to somebody should do this and people should do this. And I, my wife and I talked about it. I said, well, why can't I be the one to do this? And why can't I be the one to do that? So I started, um, I started a, a, a tournament trail here in Ohio. It's called the mid Ohio catfishing tournament trail. If you guys want to look it up on Facebook last year was our first season. I started it late in the year. Uh, we fished nine different lakes last year. We serviced 75 different boats, 150 different anglers. Uh, everybody competed for great prizes, um, and, and it was awesome. This year, I took it a step farther. Because of the conservation, because of the education in catfishing, we added a link division to it, not just a kayak division. Um, we invite anybody who fishes on the bank, anybody who fishes out of a boat that doesn't have a live well, anybody who fished out of a kayak, come fish our events. The tournament trail is purchasing 50 musky bumper boards. Um, that we will loan out to fishermen that can't afford it or don't want to make the investment, whatever it is. Um, we'll submit those fish through an app. Um, it's something that has never uh, – Joe Hatfield started it here on Hoover last year. We're kind of taking it, and we're running it through the whole state. Our, our tournament trail covers – what I did was I split the state in quadrants, northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. I put five events in each one of those quadrants, and our championship is on the river. Um our first event coming up on the weight side is in Gallipolis. It's a free event. Um, the only thing you have to do is you have to buy a T-shirt for the event. So there's going to be a specialized T-shirt. Um, if you want to participate in the event but you don't want to buy the T-shirt, we absolutely would love to have you come out and fish against everybody. You just won't be eligible for the prizes if you don't have the T-shirt on. 
Uh, right now we're at 81 boats, uh, running gun catfishing out of, uh, down by Kentucky Dam just signed up as our 81st boat. We're cutting that tournament off at 200 boats. We have people from New York, West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, Alabama, um, Tennessee, and two guys from Indiana signed up. And we got guys from across the country, uh, signed up for this. And like I said, it's a free event. It's all the money, the money. I'm not going to lie. The payout money is coming from the t-shirt as well as Gallipolis put in money into the pot as well to cover what the t-shirts don't. They're super excited to have us. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. Um, and it's going to be the first event of our tournament trail. Our tournament trail has 20 events all over the state of Ohio. There's an angler of the year race that pays out a total of $10,000 in prize money. That's all sponsored. Um, and this is on both the weight and the, the length side. There's an angler of the year race on both. And then there's the championship at the end that pays out $10,000. Um, you have to qualify for the championship by fishing a certain number of events. And the top 20 teams will then move on to the championship, which the top 20 teams will then vote on where we fish at. We did it in Cincinnati last year. Um, so I wanted a second to plug that. I mean, that, that tournament trail means a lot to me. It's kind of my redemption story. Um, and we are, we're building every day. So I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Oh, dude, not a problem. We're, we have a great show tonight with you. As we did the last time, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad that, that we got was able to do it. And, and Corey, you know, you, sh you should know now for sure what I told you last time. Uh, it's true. If you have anything you ever need to share with, with the public, all you have to do is contact one of us. We'll make it happen for you. Well, I appreciate uh, that. This this was a great story. You caught an outstanding fish. I would love to meet Chris sometime. I'm sure that he is a outstanding guy. Also, he is uh, a, one of the best guys you can meet. Give you. A oh, chance. I thought you said he is, and I thought oh, <laughs> I had, I had no, on no, his head. <laughs> I said he is a uh, an outstanding guy. <laughs> But yeah, off your back kind of guy. It, it is it is very uh, obvious that you guys get along really well uh, from the, the way you told the story and and you yelling at him and him not getting mad and throwing you out of the boat and you know <laughs> stuff like that. But you know it, it that's a that's a man that's a fish of a lifetime. Oh, yeah. You may catch another one bigger tomorrow, and you may never catch one that size again. You don't know, but you caught that one, right? And and that that's enough would be enough for me. <laughs> I fished a lot longer than you have, and I've never caught one that's so yeah. And it congratulations. was congratulations. We caught it, man, and I knew I knew podcasts would be calling. Like I said, the only other thing I did was the Louisiana Sportsman, uh, and and I told Chris, I said, when I get to tell the story, it's going to be on Catfish Weekly. Oh, I said, you know, the, awesome. thank in you. In the in the last in the last section of what I had going on, you guys reached out, and and I promised you, if anything big ever happened, you guys be the first to hear it. So. Well, it's it's that door is always open, and and we have a lot of other people that that we do that with, but um, it's not very often I tell somebody that and they catch a state record fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, guys, yeah, paper, I, uh, paper or not, that's definitely a you you have that state record. Yeah, I mean, right. that's well, nobody I always have in my mind. Nobody can take that fish away from you. So no, and and and. You know, more than the fish, man, it was, the, it was the time Chris and I had and the memories yeah. that were made, you know. That's right. And you yeah. got all the pictures and video, and you got to share it with how many people? Uh, at one time, there were 1,700 people in there. There you go. Wow. And they're not ever going to forget watching that with you. For the next I, – I had a lot of fun the next week and a half. I'd be sitting at home or even on the drive home. I would just go into every TikTok live if they were fishing. And it was so funny. I'd go in, I'd be like, hey, guys, what's up? Oh, my goodness. It's Ohio River catfishing. He just caught a state record. Every single one that I went into. My wife was like, this is kind of odd. I truly think CatCon is going to be a good time this year. Oh, it will be for you. I'm sure it will, yeah. So it, it, was, it was an awesome fish, guys. It was an awesome memory. I appreciate the opportunity to tell the story. I told Roger, and, and, and he said maybe in a couple weeks uh, I'll go on there and it's not going to be like the first time I told it, but I think it'd be just as fun to. I'll talk about it until I until I can't talk anymore. You, know, you have a hell of a story to tell. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely exactly right. <laughs> and maybe who knows? I'm going back next week. Maybe I'll be back on here in three weeks telling you about the next one I get. <laughs> just, just let me know. <laughs> like I said, make sure you have all those numbers tested. That they don't yeah. go to like. That's you know, right. I got his address in my phone now. Yeah, there I'll you put go. it in the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> his daughter's house. Here we go. <laughs> Beat on the door at midnight. Come on, man. I gave you the benefit of the doubt on New Year's Eve. Get up. <laughs> Josh, what have you got for us tonight? Uh, we do not have a bragging board tonight. We were, no bragging uh, board. Okay. I was pressed for time uh, trying to get something else. It's got a little bit of a deadline. so. Okay. No we'll problem. We'll do that we'll next week. Put them all together. Uh, Yep, we'll have a good bragging board next week. I knew the show would run long tonight because we had an awesome guest anyway. That's so. right. That's well, right. I appreciate that. Chad, I saw a lot there? of chat. I saw a lot in chat that I couldn't read. This chat goes away when this thing goes <laughs> Chat was going fast. Chat was yeah, rolling quick tonight. Is there, a, is there a way to reread those comments so I can answer people later or no? They re it replaced chat. Yeah. With yeah we're going to do chat replay shortly yeah. after the uh, broadcast ends. So. Once, oh, once, okay. the, uh, once the live fully loads onto YouTube, the whole chat will be through the, in, in there. You can go yeah. through and. Oh, cool. Okay. I just everything. want to make sure because I saw, yeah. I saw, I just quickly scrolled. I saw a lot of comments that I'd like to answer. Yeah. And I didn't see them all either. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I never do. Right. You don't. Well, Corey, you're up to 95 subscribers on YouTube now. I'm five short of 100. We, when do I we get monetized? We can <laughs> surely make that before the night is over. Yeah, we've got 100 people watching right now. If you're not subscribed to Corey, I just dropped drop this link in the chat. Go over. You're not going to be disappointed. I am going to be putting more content on YouTube. Please bear with me on my screen recorded TikTok videos that are on there right now. You gotta understand, I'm coming from Tiki Talkie Land. Is that how you say it? Well, once you yeah, once you, once you grow up, you start you come yeah. over to the YouTube world. It's okay. Well, that's what it is. You know, I'm living a new life. I'm I'm fine. I want to be like Chad now. I got to be on YouTube. Oh my God! Three, more. Say that I need seven, three more before the end of the show. We need three. Three oh, more. No, LG amazing. Bass has just signed on to Corey. Hundred and one. There we go. Perfect. And Thanks, Corey, man. I'll let I you know. That so much. You know. Uh, yeah, I'd already talked to you about that tournament you have over there in Gallipolis that weekend. So uh, we still haven't decided yet, but come on over, buddy. I'll wait until you're at like boat 199 before I make a decision. It's going to fill up. It, it's at least go it is going in the right direction of where I'll be going anyways. Yeah. So I just got to, I just got to sweet talk the wife and to see if she wants to do it or not. Come on, D. I'm coming to CatCon just to get D's autograph. <coughs> well, I'm charging you for your, for my autograph. I ain't charging I'll, other people, but you should. All right, I'll take you. You were giving people autographs whether they wanted it or not last year. I just gave he you was a silver chasing Sharpie. them down, taking paper away from them. So he I it. turned, it, I gave him a silver sharpie and turned him loose. So Listen, it, it, it is Josh's fault. I'll yeah. pay him. I'll pay him, and I'll take him fishing once. Totally there you needs. go. Can't beat a deal like that. Well, if you want to learn how to fish, you got to go with me, not me take you. you know, me take you, not you take me. I don't know. Oh wow. <laughs> I saw some of them tournaments you've been visioning. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not forget the time I assured you I was coming and didn't. Yeah. yeah. I felt so bad about that. I even offered I, to say I wouldn't look. We've Interesting. had such a great show. I wasn't even going to bring up, you know, what you did to me that day. That's cool. Yeah. I assured him I was coming. And Chris and I were like, dude, it is way too cold. Or way, or way too long. We were out all night long. I was like, I'm way too tired. So I, I but. In my defense, I said, hey, shoot me your cash app, and I will still donate my entry fee it was all right. because I know people count on that. It's and you never right. did. It's okay. And I don't have cash app, so. Oh, well. There we go. Moving up. Be nice. Moving up in the world to 104. Yep, I'm showing 107 now. Nice. Man. Nice. You guys got all night, or yeah. I ain't got nothing going on. <laughs> <laughs> no. What do I need? Nine hundred and how many more to be monetized? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I think they recently changed some things. Yeah, they changed. Well, they so. changed some of it up. Yeah. I forget how it works. I don't even know what it is. I'll be Justin Johnston by the end of the night here. Well, oh, you wow. never can tell. Yeah, thank you guys so much for for subscribing. I know, and even <laughs> even on YouTube land, when I came on last time, it was divided on how many people were in the chat that liked me. And how many people didn't? I mean, there were some harsh comments in the last one. You I know? still haven't decided. Well, <laughs> well somebody oh, wants you, won. you won me over tonight, Corey. Yeah, if somebody. If, I thought if somebody I won you last time. You did, but you had re reaffirmed <laughs> it tonight. Well, yeah. I wasn't here. I wasn't here to win anybody, man. I was here to to share a testament that I hope touches touches the lives of people, and they can understand that 
a I lot know. of Jesus Christ. It did me. It, it did me. I, I was really taken by the way you you told it and everything that went on, and I know a lot of other people was too. And even Chad, he may lie about it, but he, he got him a little bit. I got him in his feelings. I saw him with a tissue. <laughs> yep. there was a Chad, what, do, what do you got on the bait shop this week, Chevin? Uh, we'll probably be touching base on the uh, Winter Blues tournament that's been going on this past weekend, and we got one more day of it coming up here this coming Saturday. It'll be the final day of it. So <coughs> we might invite some people on to see if they want to do some trash talking or not to see. Yeah, sure. I mean, it happens every once in a while in the bait shop. Yeah. But really? That'll probably be what we do this week. If they're not scared, you know. Wednesday night on Panfish Nation, Mark and I are going to go over the discussion. Has it been too cold to fish? No. And oh, regardless, absolutely. regardless of what James Dockery said, he hasn't been out of his house in three or four days. So, yes, I feel. The poor man got the snow over his head. But if it was 10 inches Don't deep, it'd be over his head. Yeah. Listen, I did a favor for James Dockery. <laughs> it wasn't long ago. I caught a yes. <laughs> I caught a sixteen and a quarter inch crappie that weighed about wow. three pounds. Giant. And I put it back instead of using it for bait. And the whole time <laughs> James Dockery was on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> he would have ate it. I promise I you. I was gonna say I would have ate it. Yeah, he'd have ate that. And, he and, and so the mad at me for using crappie. Yeah, Dockery's the reason being, being says he's been out a lot, Lyle. So no, it's he not has. Cold fish. No, he has. The uh, the thing about them is, Corey James has always told me that that crappie and bluegill have an extremely short life cycle. So if you don't go ahead and harvest them when they get big like that, they will end up dying that size, and nobody gets the benefit out yeah. of them at all. Well, they're not like a catfish. Catfish live 25, 30 years or longer. But these, you know, five, six, seven, eight years is about, about the limit yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, then it's a good thing I feed a lot of them to the blue cats at Hoover then. I agree. Yeah. I wish we could <laughs> use them down. I wish we could use them down here. And I do, too. I wish so, too, because yeah. – and and them ditch pickles, I, I would cut one of them up in a heartbeat just, all. just to piss people off. I promise Absolutely. <laughs> large mouth bass catch large mouth catfish with flat That's what I'm talking about right <laughs> <laughs> just so happens to be one of my favorite baits on the Ohio River. <laughs> Man, if you can get them five pounds or bigger, they're really good. <laughs> you're going to send James into a convulsion here. <laughs> Hashtag crappies. They is not bait. They not bait. <laughs> well, now you got to highlight Josh. <laughs> I took care of it. Okay. Crappie is great bait. Great bait. Crappie is... <laughs> Is especially if you're fishing on the Hoover Reservoir. Crappie Dale is the Hayslip best. Says, Dale Hayslip says Hoover Big Blues love crappie. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh man, man, fun show tonight, fellas. Great show. Tonight. Good time. Yep, very good I time. I appreciate tonight. you guys allowing me to share my story. Well, Fair thank luck. you so much for coming on with us. And Corey, and, come back. You gotta come back and uh, see us again. Absolutely, I have a blast on this show. That's good because we enjoy having you, and and uh, we had a lot of views tonight, and you brought some of the new ones into us. Yeah. We appreciate that. We got a lot of new members tonight. Thank thank you to all the new memberships we have to the channel. Really do appreciate that. You got to remind Absolutely. everybody: this is the longest running talk show, catfishing talk show yes. on YouTube. Yep. We're, yep, we're ten are. and a half years now because in June yeah, it was ten year anniversary. Yeah, uh, that's right. Lyle started Catfish Weekly. The first one is scrawled on the walls of a cave. So oh, nice. I mean, <laughs> it was when he was sitting behind Jesus in the second grade. He was writing it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yuck it up, fellas. Yuck it up. Oh, well, that was that's good. good. That was good. That's that was really good. good. <laughs> I got, you got D cackling in the other room. I hear. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody that joined us in the show tonight. Of course, Corey for being on the show, Josh and, and Chad. Uh, this is one one of the, the great shows we've had in a while. I mean, we've had some good shows, but this one was extremely fun. 
and I enjoyed it very much. If you guys got anything to close it out, we'll get ready to go. We'll see you on Thursday night over at the base top, or if you want to come watch the tournament Saturday morning, it'll be 9 a.m. over on Fields to Water. Yep. We got a video dropping tomorrow you guys are want to definitely going to want to take a look at. That's all I'm going to say about that one, so you're going to have to go check it out when it, uh, when it drops. And, and um, I know about it because I seen some of it when it was being done, and I promise you, you will enjoy it. It's a great and Let's just say we're, we're going to test something, and we are going to be thorough on the testing. That's right. That's right. And Corey, guys, thank you. Thank one you more once time, again. if you guys would, please check out the Mid-Ohio Catfishing Tournament Trail. We have some big stuff coming up, some big sponsors, and we truly are a trail that's for every fisherman. You know, Corey, if you ever need to get the word out about any of that stuff, all you have to do is contact us. Yeah, we'll help you all we can. And help you can always you share can. your tournaments over to that. Yes, yeah, so uh, share your Facebook results. Group. We'll get them right on the, uh, on the show. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep, I think we got, what, eleven or 12,000 uh, uh, Facebook members now? Yeah, you're so well yeah, over 10. It's a lot. Big well number. over 10 on there. Yeah, it's a big number. So. Thanks again, Corey. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We appreciate you being in here tonight. Be sure to tune in back next Monday night. It's 7 o'clock Central Time, Catfish Weekly. See you. Have a great week, y'all. Have a great week, everybody.